What's up, students? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today, a lesson about distance and displacement. I'm going to give you a definition of both of these, talk about their differences and also their similarities, and give four different examples of questions that you might get asked about distance and displacement. And this is going to be relevant to anybody that's looking to take the SAT physics exam, somebody taking AP1 physics, the New York State Regents exam in physics, or just your general basic high school physics class. All right, so let's get into this. Okay, so an object is going to have some position in space. And to describe this space, we usually use some sort of axis or something just to describe the motion. But we'll say like an object starts, we'll say here. And then it's going to move over to here. So now what we have is a change of position from here to here. Now, depending on the course that you're going to take, we're going to show this change in position with a bunch of different variables. Those variables might be shown as just D or maybe X and sometimes even S. So if you see any of these, we are definitely going to be talking about a change in position. And a change in position is denoted by some sort of length. So we're going to be using a unit of meters whenever we are talking about a change in position and how far that change in position is from the start spot. Now, when I move in a one-dimensional fashion, I can say that, that the change of position from here to here is called distance. This is going to be the distance traveled from this object from a starting position to an ending position. So distance is going to be a measure of the actual path taken. And we call this a scalar quantity because it does not have any direction associated with it. So another example would be if I start here at zero meters and I say that I move way over here to one meter, that means that my distance is simply one meter. But now what if I need a direction? Like if, if you ask somebody, hey, I want to go to Starbucks and get the newest spiced frappe, latte, whatever, somebody can't just say, oh, drive 45 meters, right? They'd have to give you some sort of direction. And when we give that direction, it changes the variable that we're going to want to talk about. So when we're given a direction, now we need some sort of vector, right? Vectors talk about direction and the vector form of distance is displacement. Now, a little way that I remember this, guys, when I was a high school student, I remember that a scalar starts with S. So I remember scalar was simple. Scalar, simple. And vector was very hard. There was just more information with a vector. So I said simple, scalar, vector, very hard. And if I look at these two words, like if you're a toddler, I have a toddler, if I'm trying to teach her words, which one of these two words here or here would be easier for a toddler to learn? It would probably be distance. Distance is a simpler word and it is a scalar. That's how I always remembered which is a vector and which is a scalar because you are going to be asked to identify is this distance a scalar or a vector or which of the following is a vector. And if you saw a distance and displacement, Simple, scalar, distance. More information, harder is a vector. So now with displacement, a way that we can show the variables are a little different, we're going to show these as delta D, delta X, delta S. If I'm going height, I might say delta H for delta height. It really depends. If I'm on the Y axis, delta Y. All of these things are going to be used to show displacement over distance. You might also see them shown in vector notation, where if I have an X, if you see something with an arrow on top of it, that is going to mean that is a vector as well. So there's going to be different ways, depending on your course, the, the book that you're using and your teacher, but you're just going to be able to have to put this into reference and understand exactly what's going on. And directions can mean anything that you know where to walk. So we have up, down, left, right. 
north south east west etc like any anything that tells you where to walk is going to be a direction and i think its technical definition makes it a little bit easier to understand and it it really shows the difference between it and distance so the definition is going to be the distance directly from the start this is really important this from start to finish is very important because we have to show a direction. So up here, we would say that if we had to draw the displacement, we would do this and we would have to add that arrow. Where in distance, we wouldn't. And that's one of the things I'm going to show you in the four examples of questions that you might get asked. Because sometimes in one dimensional motion, distance and displacement are actually going to be equal. Let's take a look at the four examples. So that first one wasn't really an example, but I'll just repeat what I said. If I start there and finish here, if I want to know the distance versus displacement, and each one of these boxes is a meter, so one meter, two meters, three meters, the distance answer would be three meters. But the displacement answer would be three meters east. We need that direction. That would be the only difference. And if I would had to draw the displacement vector, I would draw it, and I must add an arrow. We are going to do a lab where we are going to measure the distance and displacement and we are going to draw it. You must have an arrowhead. So here's officially example one. If I start here, I go up one meter, two meters north. Then I go one meter, two meters to the east. And then I go one meter, two meters to the west. And I finish, I mean that's to the south. I finish here. So these were each two meter segments. What is the distance and displacement? Well, the distance we remember is the total path traveled. Two, four, six meters. The displacement is the direct distance from the start to the finish. So the answer to the displacement is really going to be two meters east. Example two comes up as a tricky one. I see it often to keep my life a little bit neater. I'm going to use this right here because I am not good at drawing circles. Now, let's say this is the start and the finish. So this object traveled in a circle and got to here. Distance and displacement. Well, the distance is going to be equal to the circumference where the displacement is going to be zero meters because from the start to the finish is zero meters. And I say this is a tricky one because when we get into formulas and finding average velocity and stuff, there we're going to need the distance in that average velocity formula. And they always give the radius. And students always use this radius as the distance. Where an average velocity, like an object in a merry-go-round, going around and around, the distance is the circumference. We need to remember that. Example three. Let's say I start here and I go one two, three meters to the east. And then I go one, two, three, four meters up into the north. And I finish right here. Now what is my distance and displacement? My distance is going to be the total path traveled with no direction needed. So that is going to be equal to seven meters, three plus four. The displacement is a direct distance from the start to the finish. I made that dotted just so I didn't make a mess. Probably should do straight lines here. With an arrowhead from the start to the finish. And this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle. I made it that way. So we know that displacement is going to be 5 meters northeast. Don't forget the direction with displacement. That is super important. An example 4, I'll just drop down here real quick. Let's say I start right here. And I go... Up one, two meters to here. And then I'll change my color just so we can see. Then I come back down one meter here. So I went down three meters. And I went up to the north two meters. What is my distance and displacement?
My distance is going to be the total traveled. So my total traveled is going to be five meters. But from the start to the finish, right here, with an arrowhead from the start to the finish, is only going to be one meter south. Guys, that's all you need to know about distance and displacement from a general sense. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. I promise I will get to them. Stay positive, keep working hard, guys, and always be kind to other people. I'll catch you on the next one.